When you're scraping data, you often need to interact with the website. So for example, you need to fill out a search form. So let's say we have some example e-commerce website and we're searching for code. Here's then the data perhaps that we're actually interested in, right? So here we have a bunch of product data. This is what we would like to scrape. So what I could do is right click inspect. And then I had to dig into the HTML here to find out how I could select the specific elements here that I would need. So if I wanted to get the price here, I could see, oh, this one has a class of price i would have to manually select my element like this and then i could get its text content to get the price right really cumbersome and really fragile because websites these days they change their html structure over time right so if they change the class name here my script would be out of date so this video has agent ql as the sponsor and i have to say this is one of the more impressive ai tools that i've come across now why do i think it's so impressive well let me just show you so we can use their sdk in our code but before we get there, we can also quickly try them out with their extension here in Chrome. I already installed this. I can then right click here and here I have agent QL now. So if I want to get the product data from the page, I can use curly braces here and I can say I want a list of product and each item in that list should have a title, description and price. And this is data so i can click on fetch data so let's see what we would get as the result all right so here you can see i'm getting a result this is the exact data that i want all right so products and title this is the exact same as what we have here right lightweight puffer code yeah so all the data here is correct now very importantly i'm not using some selector here i'm actually describing what i want in natural language so i could also say a list of products Right. And maybe I'm not saying, maybe somebody else would call this the name of the product. Right. If I do that, I get the exact same result because it's semantically the same thing. So I can describe in natural language here what I want from the page. And Agent QL under the hood makes sure it's grabbing the right uh, content from there to give to us. Right. And maybe I also want to see how many results there are, basically just grabbing this piece. So I can just add that here as well, number of results. I don't need to specify anything in here because it shouldn't be some nested object. It's just, it's just one number essentially. So let's try this, All right? So you can see, I can just describe in natural language essentially what I want and agent QL under the hood will use some kind of AI match that with whatever is on the page. Now, one other thing I really like is it makes transforming data really easy as well. So price here, you can see they have these decimals. We can say nearest integer, right? So we want these prices in integers and we can even say description it should be two keywords right? and we can also say out of this list of product we want to say skip wool products because maybe we don't want wool products in our results so now if i do this let's see what we get all right so here we get product this time it actually skips the first one and we get this second one here in the beginning with the price as an integer now so it's rounded and right, so we can not only very easily grab the exact data that we want we can also immediately transform the data into the shape that we want it to be so here what i'm doing is i'm getting data from the page right that's the one option here we also have this other button here fetch web elements this is when we want to get access to some element on the page because we perhaps want to interact with it so for example here i want to get access to this input field because i want to type something maybe we want to go to pillows here and scrape the pillow data then I want to click on this search button here we need to submit the form right so i need to get access to these two elements and it works the same way so i could say search input that's the first element and then the second one is the submit button and again it doesn't really matter how i describe this because as long as it's semantically the same the uh, agent ql under the hood will make sure it getting the right element right so here you can see it got correctly these two elements from the page this is just the extension here in our code now we could do something similar and we could then use playwright for example to actually submit the form navigate to that particular page and grab the pillow products data all right so now that we know how agent ql works we can build an ai scraper here step by step in our actual code we can use agent ql because they now also have a javascript sdk in addition to their python sdk which is really nice because if you watch my channel you know we like javascript so we want to do some scraping here and let's start off easy let's go directly to this individual products page and try to get the product data like before so we're going to create a file called scraper.js 
Podcast. And in this file, I will have one function here, which I will call scraper. So we want to use agent QL. And so we need to get an API key. So we can go to the website and click on the button here, get API key. I can click on create a new API key and they will give me an API key. Make sure you don't show it to other people. I will delete it after recording. And I'm gonna store this in a new file, which I will call .env. And I will call this agent API key and just paste it like this. Now I need to make sure I'm, I'm actually gonna load these environment variables. So I will use a package called .env and then use .convec. Now I do need to install that package, also npm install .env. When I do that, you can see it automatically creates package JSON and node modules. It's basically set this API key for agent QL. I'm getting that from agent QL from the agent QL package. So here is also where I'm gonna install the agent QL package itself. All right, so then it's gonna be quite similar as to using uh, play Playwright, or maybe you've used a Puppeteer or some other. In this case, we're going to use Chromium from Playwright. So we need to install Playwright as well. So we can do Chromium.launch. And then when we create a new page, we need to wrap it with a function that we also get from agent ql so that we can then use this page variable with essentially the agent ql features so it will work very similar as to just using playwright so for example now we can go to that page and we're just going directly to there i like to add some timeouts here just so the website has some time to load everything it will land on this page and now we want to grab the data how do we do that here in the code just like before so remember it's with these curly braces right so here we can have that query we can it should be multi-line here and we want to get the number of results so basically whatever this number is and we want to grab all the product data but we're specifying here ignore wool products right so within the parentheses we can describe additional context for agent ql so it will grab all of this data the name description we have some additional context here and basically a way to get the exact shape of the data that we want and then we can use that page variable with query data remember the two main queries are getting the actual data or the html element in this case, we do not need to do any other interaction, so we can just go directly for querying data. Agent QL will give us a response with the data if everything goes all right. I will log that, but also I want to create a file in my file system with the actual data in there. And then I will close the browser. So let's try running this script. It's just a scraper.js. So we can say node scraper.js and let's see what we get. All right, so I'm using ES modules here. So to make that work here, I can do is module here in my package.json. Let's try that again. All right, I'm going to try that again. And actually it opens up an instance of Chromium here. All right, so here we get the actual data. So let's actually uh, double check. So number of results is indeed five. It correctly skipped the wool code. So it's actually really beneficial because there may be ads or something in the list on, on, or some other undesirable elements that we can easily skip. So it gets all the price data in integer format. You can see this indeed should be $100. Right? I also saved the data here as a file nicely in JSON. Very easy, zero hassle with selectors. All right, so this was easy because we went directly to the page with all the data, but very often, you're starting somewhere else, perhaps on the home page, and we need to interact with it first before we get to the desired data. So here we may actually need to search for something. If I search here, we will land on the same page. When we submit that form, we land on the same page. But how would you do something like this where we have to interact with the page? Well, it's actually very easy with agent QL as well. So remember now the initial URL page is gonna be that home page. So it will land on this page. We will wait for two seconds. And now we're not gonna make a data query immediately we will first get the elements that we need to interact with that's the other major query that we can do with agent ql so here so here we want to select the uh, search input as well as the search form submit button right and again the nice thing is i can describe it in any way i like different different people will call it different things that's okay as long as the semantic meaning is the same agent ql or the ai it's using under the hood should be able to properly select for example this blue button here right so now i can call page again but now with query elements before it was query data because we can now it's querying the elements and i'm calling it elements query i can call it whatever i want uh, but let's uh, just continue here and i will get a response so that response will allow me to actually fill out that input with whatever I want actually and then click the button and so now we want to fill out the form so we can use response.search input because that's how I called it here and then I can use the fill method and once it has filled it out with codes we want to actually click 
on the submit button, right? So then we want to submit the form, submit button, right? So again, it's the name that you specify here, and then we can just call a click. And actually, before it does that, we also, I'm also going to add a delay so we can see what it's doing. So we will also make it wait for two seconds here before clicking the actual submit button. All right, now if everything goes well, it types in codes, it clicks on the search button, and then it arrives at this page, just like before. So after that, it can just continue doing the same as what we just did. I probably should rename it because here I have the same variable name. I'll call it data response. Right, this time it will be data query again because now we're actually going to get the actual data. All right, so now this is a more complex operation because we first need to interact with the page. Let's see if it's still working now with Agent QL. I'm going to open this and you can see it's, it starts to open up this uh, Chromium instance here and it's going to show me what it's doing. So in a bit it should type uh, codes here. So let's see what happened. Uh, yeah, so here you can see it actually typed codes here. I'm not doing this and then you can see it submitted that and now it is on that results page and I didn't do this myself. This is just like a, a preview of what's going on so uh, and then it's finished it closes it and here we get our data logged just like before but now we have a much more sophisticated uh, journey here where we actually need to interact mul in mul with multiple elements here before we get to our desired results page with the data you can see we get the same data as before so everything is working perfectly fine. Right, so I have to say really slick experience here. And yeah, I really believe this is one of the more impressive AI tools that have come out so far. I will leave the code as a link in the description so you can take a look at it yourself. But make sure to check out the link in the description as well for Agent QL. If you quickly wanna give them a try here, they have a playground. You can try their Chrome extension or they also have a playground here on the website. So here you can specify the URL. So I'm just using the same URL as what we were using before. And here you can then try, let's say num of results, which is just gonna be some, uh, just a single number. And then if you wanna get all the products, you can also do something else, maybe the product titles, right? And just leave it like that. It can just suggest a query for me, or I can just type it manually myself. And then I can fetch the data. And you can see here, I get the data in there and it correctly gets only the titles, not the other data, right? So really slick. If you quickly wanna try it out, I would say, check out the playground here. So here I know what I want. So I can write it like that. Now I can also use the AI widget here. You can say something like, I need a list of all product titles and how many characters the title consists of. And so here I can be very casual about what I want. If I submit this, it will give me the actual query that I can try using. All right, so uh, it suggests this one for me. So I will get a list here and each item in that list will have that product title as well as the title length. See if that works. I'm gonna fetch the data here and let's see what we will get as a result. All right, so here you can see I'm getting all of the titles here corresponding length, really slick. And especially if you're already familiar with Playwright, for example, this is a really powerful tool in your toolbox. Scraping, getting the actual data, it helps with automation, testing, because we can very easily query the elements and interact with them, right? Querying them in natural language. But as long as the semantic meaning of this corresponds to what the element is on the page, Agent QL should be able to find that element. This is so fast. I sometimes don't even have to look at the page anymore because I know what type of element will be on the page. I just describe it in natural language here and it's able to find the actual element for me. I actually have some really nice examples here in the documentation as well. So there are some other common things you would wanna do like closing some kind of modal or dialogue pop up. Sometimes you need to script something behind a login screen by filling out a form, for example, very similar to what we've done in this example. And of course, they also have a Python SDK and they now also have a REST API endpoint that we can make a post request to. So if you prefer to just send a post request to, a, to Agent QL here and get a result back that way, they have this endpoint for you to a post call to. The main benefit of what we're doing here is that we have very fine-grained control over the browser instance, but you can still do a lot here with the REST API as well, including waiting for, and they're actually working on many other features like scheduling, scraping jobs. So I would say check out Agent QL. I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video. Really one of the more impressive AI tools that I've come across so far. I hope that you see value in their product as well. Check out the link in the description, give their playground a try. And then I wanna thank you for watching as well. Have a nice day, bye.